The main Anglosphere nations are the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. These nations were considered to be an extension of Britain itself. They are essentially the same family, separated by the sea. If these nations were to unite, they would become a new global spanning superstate with limitless potential that many people are dubbing Kanzuk. They all share pretty much the same culture, government structure, history, traditions and standards of living. Even more, the vast majority of people from these nations can track their heritage back to the British Isles. However, history has proven that the best unifying factor is a common threat. And you might be surprised to hear, but they all do face very similar threats. The UK has always and will always have a tumultuous relationship with other European nations. For example, they're the first nation to have ever left the EU. England is closest to the Nordic countries, who are also skeptical of the EU. Their power links are already linked. They have some of the most stable demographics in Europe. And the UK and Nordic nations together control North Sea trade, with their great naval capacities, which the continent is heavily reliant on. While Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland are closest to the Republic of Ireland, whose economy is the golden child of the EU. This is because they all see themselves as Celtic nations. The Republic of Ireland also receives a huge amount of investment from Anglosphere nations, such as the USA. This is mainly down to their low corporation tax of around 12%. However, this being said, the UK is very much separated from the continent and the Republic of Ireland. The European Union feels insulted by the British, and the UK's closest allies are heavily tied to the EU. The UK also mostly feels culturally separated from the rest of the continent, and solely due to geography, as the Eurozone economies begin to fail, so will the UK's. Canada's closest ally is the USA to their south, and they are also highly dependent on the USA. Although they don't feel culturally separated, they do feel overshadowed by the USA economically and culturally. This makes Canada go relatively unnoticed outside of the English speaking world. Canada is also pretty much fully dependent on having positive relations with the United States, while attempting to balance their own national interest and cultural division. Australia and New Zealand's closest friends and allies are each other, and are surrounded by vastly different cultures and ideas, although they do have a lot of cooperation and trade with other nearby Commonwealth nations. Their main problem is that they struggle to economically compete with low-wage labour economies in the Asian nations nearby, with their main threat being China, who rules over this side of the world. These two nations feel much more culturally separated than the UK, which is why both of these nations attempt to build up closer relationships with Canada and USA across the sea. This is just some of the reasons why the idea of a unified Kanzuk gains popularity year by year. As a union, these nations would be so much stronger, have more influence on the world stage, and be able to provide a better quality of life for their citizens. However, they are reluctant to do so due to their freedom and independent-minded culture. Freedom and sovereignty are important aspects of Anglo culture. It is the same wanting for freedom and sovereignty that has been the main strength and weakness for these nations throughout history. While some other parts of the world are all too ready to join into unions and federations with one another. The Kanzuk nations have started to recognise this however, reforging some of their old strength they once held together. Such as higher military merging, closer trade relationships, and better intelligence sharing. And since the UK has left the EU, these relationships are getting much closer each day. This would be particularly great for Canada, as they would be the middleman and connection point of Kanzuk. While the UK can better drive trade in and out of Europe, while Australia and New Zealand will be able to better compete with the low wage and authoritarian Asian nations nearby. If Kanzuk were to unite, or even just form an economic union, it would stand as the largest bloc on the planet. It would be rich in resources, leaders in terms of emerging industries, be a military and naval powerhouse, and have one of the strongest economies in the world that would only grow faster as they supported one another. It would also have plenty of expansion space for its citizens who would now have arguably the best standard of living in the world. 
It would also be of benefit and a great partner to the USA and the EU in promoting Western values throughout the world. It could also support the USA much more in standing up to nations like Russia and China in terms of both hard and soft power. Kanzuk United would eventually become the third superpower of the world. Kanzuk's merging of military, intelligence sharing, freedom of movement and stronger economic ties are now constantly talked about. They also vote together in the UN and have done so since its creation. Australia and New Zealand are already particularly integrated. With the Trans-Tasman Travel Agreement and the closer economic relations trade agreement that the UK and Canada could use as a foundation point to speed up an agreement between all four nations. This would set up adaptable free movement and free trade agreements that protects and respects all parties. Kanzuk could then choose to create a shared monetary mechanism and come to an agreement on international and defence policies and agreeing upon a simple legal framework or maybe even a Commonwealth Parliament structure meaning that each of these nations would need to be prepared to give up some level of sovereignty. These agreements would also need to take into account the vastly different geopolitical and natural landscapes of each of these nations. It would also be necessary to build a powerful navy to protect the vast spanning union, which would put heads with the USA if they start to see Kanzuk as a marine time threat. The USA itself would hold a huge amount of soft power in all negotiations between Kanzuk. Whether Kanzuk would choose to federalise in the same way as the EU or the USA is another contentious debate. However, I believe they could do this because of the cultural similarities. Unlike the EU, which is very culturally diverse with many nations, official languages, legal codes and systems with a long history of animosity towards one another. The Kanzuk nations are already wildly uniform, with the only major difference being currency. Alternatively, Kanzuk could just act as a close economic alliance, not federalising or centralising at all, but instead just working together on the international stage as sovereign independent nations, with no supernatural structures at all, just simple collaboration between four friendly nations. The biggest thing standing in the way of Kanzuk is simply the long distance and separation between its territories. It's simply easier to trade with and form alliances with those who you're nearest to. However, although it's harder, it's certainly not impossible in the modern world, and it will only get easier as technology improves. The idea of Kanzuk also has high public approval, according to Kanzuk International. And when polled, the people of these nations always cite each other as their closest friends and allies. So at this point, the ball is in the politician's court. Be sure to check out my other channel, History Sticks, for the complete, longer and comprehensive video.